up, everybody? Welcome to ZOMG, our video game trailer reaction show. We're going to be watching Star Wars Battlefront 2 PS4 gameplay trailer. I am joined with... If you want away. And Malika Lynn. And I'm Zach Eubank. Uh, I think we all love Star Wars, so I think we should just. Ba -ba, get, yeah. yeah, we should just get right into it. Let's yeah, jump right Let's just jump world. right into this. <laughs> just, just do it. I love seeing, oh, we got battle droids up in here. Man. This was the mission they had us play. Those were our crates. Oh, Super man. Holy shit. Sector is clear. Oh. Yes. Yep. Oh, you don't see it another familiar place. Oh, oh, Shit. Okay, so, uh, what? All right. This doesn't feel like a sequel to Battlefront 1. This feels like a reimagining of the original Battlefront 2 that we got back in the day that was the game everybody <laughs> wanted when Battlefront 1 came out a couple yeah. years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, it, it looks a lot better. I mean, I, I don't want to say it looks a lot better, like, Graphically, because oh, graphically yeah, the first one was amazing. It was really pretty. And though. this one was is just as amazing. I got to play it actually on the PS4 uh, at the uh, Sony booth. It was very fun. Uh, they went back to uh, class based now, mm. so there's there. So you're not gonna build your out your own guy and have all that messiness. That you're. It seems like we. Uh, they still have the like kind of skill card system, but it's all class based, and then you earn battle points as you play through. And you use those battle points to buy upgrades. Before I in one, it kind of was like a random spawn for um, for the heroes, which kind of uh, you know sucked because yeah. you might go matches without playing a right. hero because someone would be there faster or someone would be camping it. And this one now, if it's available, you can actually use your battle points to buy the hero and oh, use it. What, did you get a chance to play the last one that came out? Oh, briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I what, remember that. We tried you, to stream it. We had some problems. We had a lot of problems. Yeah. EA had a lot of problems mm -hmm. with this game connecting to players properly. <laughs> oh, was, yeah. There were some bugs. Lots of bugs. Lots of bugs. But uh, so what did you think of this trailer? Oh, my goodness. So I didn't realize it's like cross eras. So yeah. there's like Chewie and Yoda and Chewbacca and like... And Rey. And Rey and Captain Phasma is in it too? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I wanted. And Darth from, Maul? Yeah. That's what I wanted from the last game. So now we finally get the cross you know, the cross yeah. eras. Finally. That's what we wanted. Uh, and it sounds like they're taking a lot of the feedback we as fans had and actually enacting it, which... Hey, I'm anxious to see if you fix a lot of the multiplayer problems, but yeah. oh yeah, that was a letdown. That was a, <laughs> I, we were like, "Oh, the sand is amazing. Look yeah. at the reflect." Oh man, I and really wish I could actually like play Look, the game. Yeah. The, yeah. No matter how you feel felt about like Star Wars Battlefront One, I will say Dice is probably one of my favorite teams that work on games as someone who's a battlefield fan played uh you know bad company two yeah. and two three i love the games four, and uh even now one um dice really does take try to communicate with the community and 
be better, listen to people, make the changes. Battlefield 4 had its last update of maps like a year ago. Yeah. And that game is, I think, almost like two, four years old. Right. And and so that's how long they still kept updating it, adding maps. Even after the season passed, these were free updates. So even if you didn't have the... So, like, if the if the fan base and user base could be there and, and, and support the game, DICE will listen and try and make the game better. I nice. feel like Battlefront 2 probably was already on the horizon. So they, instead of trying to apply a lot of the complaints and changes to one they just kind of did it to two and it's kind of showing here where you're right a lot of the well, complaints the, uh, the big one the really big one the big announcement that came out with this uh when they announced it was no longer will you be purchasing dlc mm -hmm. yeah all dlc updates will be free so there's one Yay! base price for the game ding, ding, ding. and then as they release new levels and everything like it because I personally spent $120 on the last game. Yeah. After all the updates and everything else. I didn't want to. Yeah. But I did. This this opens a good conversation. I I, I had a, another good conversation, the last one with the whole uh, beta thing. But there, there has been a lot of, you know, if, if anyone is on any gaming forum on the internet, we know there's this big you know, debate over DLC and DLC being most of the game. I mean, you made a real funny sketch about it, but there, there, I, I, it's interesting to find where the line is drawn, like where, because I feel like DLC can be a thing to a point. There's a reason we started buying it and if it adds enough. Yeah. If it, I think it's, if it adds enough and now it seems to be this point where, and this is, I think both sides where, on on the side it sometimes feel like developers aren't fully fleshing out a game because they know they have dlc incoming but then on the consumer side there seems to be this like entitlement to dlc where it's like no matter how full the game is if there's dlc they want more they want they want that for free it is weird how much we expect out of games considering you go to a movie at a theater for like 12 to 15 dollars in major Where's cities my free sequel yeah and Come it's on. three hours long experience a 60 dollar game sometimes gives you an experience for hundreds of hours yeah and we're still wanting more but then you have people who i think like cd project red where their expansion i think was lauded on how great it was how it felt like that old school pc expansion where it was like more game and the game itself was so chunky and meaty that you didn't feel ripped off by them adding this other thing. And it actually took a while for them to get the expansion out there. And I feel like that was like Fallout 3 in their expansions. And then somewhere in 4, people aren't happy with the expansion yeah. because they're all tiny rinky-dink stuff that well, could have I just mean, been included. I, I think it's safe to say a lot of people were upset when Battlefield 1 came out because it felt like it wasn't a finished game. Yeah, yeah. There were a ton of bugs. Baked. There was very little compared to what we remembered of Battlefront 2. Yeah. Battlefront 2 was one of the greatest games to come out on PC and consoles back in the day. Like it, it is a cherished memory for so many gamers. I still have it installed. I still play on servers every one, like once a year I'll break it open and you can still find random people to yeah. play that game online with. It, it might be broken as hell now, but it's still like, you can still do it. And it's such a cherished game. And that's what we all expected would be like an update to that, that in the, in the, in the modern era. And it wasn't. Yeah. This finally looks like it does. But on the conversation of DLC and what's expected from gamers, do you have any thoughts on that as a game designer who's worked on games that have put out big updates and things like that? Uh, or didn't. Or didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There are so many factors that go into it. And, like, as a person who has worked on a game that didn't update when we thought we were going to, sitting next to a co-worker who spent time away from his family, you know, his, his wife was about to have a kid and everything, you know, uh, seeing so many developers sacrifice to pour into a game. Sometimes a, a studio has to make the choice to ship so that everybody can survive. You know, like sometimes it's just a fact of life. It's like, we want to make art, but you know, it's, we also want to feed our families. So I think it's, that is a huge part of motivating it. However, um, I think as creative people, you know, whenever we have friends that ask for feedback on like, hey, what do you think of this script, this story, this sketch, this comic book, whatever I'm working on. And if it's really good, all your feedback is great, just more. 
you know? So I think if uh, you feel that way about a game, this is great. That's more, that's a great place for a game to have DLC. DLC should never fix a broken game, a game that doesn't have a strong, compelling mechanic or, or world. So uh, I think that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, I could have a very, very long discussion about DLC. Guys, bring it on in the comments. Yeah, please do. Let us know what you think about all this in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to check out other videos and trailer reactions and subscribe to Hyper RPG. Uh, click that button down below. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I think we're all extremely excited for this game. You'll yeah. be seeing more from us as this game gets closer to launch. Is there an official launch date for this? November 17th of 2017. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, it's so coming up. That's all it's about. Right around the time of the new console releases, yeah. all that good stuff. And around the time the movie drops. Yeah. So it's going to be good. That time of year is great. Now it's like, it's not Christmas. It's Star Wars time yeah. of year. That's basically what it is. So guys, thank you so much. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Bye. Bye.